Now this is a professionally made PCB and this is a homemade PCB I created in around two hours with the help of the Cavera CNC machine. Now before testing this machine, my idea for the opening question of this video would have been, can you spot the difference between the two PCBs? But as you can easily see, reality is often cruel and the homemade one is nowhere close to the quality of the bought one. I initially thought though that the quality would be better because the makers of the Cavera CNC approached me by saying it is perfect for PCB milling. And the YouTube video they uploaded about the process also looked very promising. And that is why I agreed to test the machine out. Not only when it comes to normal CNC usage, but also specifically when it comes to milling PCBs at home. And without spoiling too much, let me just say that while I initially had some rather big problems with the machine, the end results all look pretty awesome. And even though the homemade PCBs will not win a beauty competition, they were still all pretty much completely functional. So sit back and enjoy the show of how I spent a week with the CNC to discover all of its benefits, but also limitations. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the Altium Designer Software and JLC PCB. In case you're not in the market for such an expensive PCB milling machine, then you can use the free trial of Altium Designer to create your own PCB design that you can then upload to JLC PCB to order professional PCBs for a super low price. Currently, you get 1 to 8 layer PCBs for only $2. Crazy! The only downside in comparison to PCB milling is that the shipping time can take around a week or more. But that wait is definitely worth it. Now the machine arrived at my place in a wooden box, which due to transportation was a bit beat up. So the first step was obviously unboxing everything. And while my past me is doing that, let me just say that I received this unit free of charge for review. But like always, that does not mean that I will be going easy on it, as you will see later. And with that being said, the CNC was freed of its prison. And my first realization at this point was that it is a super heavy machine, with a weight of around 50 kg. So lifting it around is definitely a two person job. And while removing the straps and screws that kept everything in place during shipping, I also noticed that my machine apparently came with an oil stain and some smaller scratches, which I honestly didn't care too much about though. The next thing I noticed was the big assortment of accessories you get along with the machine, which includes all kinds of helpful tools and materials. So yeah, when using the CNC, you basically need no additional equipment, because they truly give you everything you could ever need. In my case, I also received the PCB fabrication package and the 4th axis module, which are normally not included with the CNC and cost a bit extra. But of course, the instruction manual as well as the examples guide is always included. And I gotta say, they did a really good job with them, since they are easy to follow and come with tons of pictures. So according to the manual, I started by inserting all the tools into the automatic tool changer, turned the machine on, connected it to my computer through a USB cable and downloaded the given software from the Cavera website. After starting it, I firstly updated the firmware of the machine and then attempted to try out the automatic tool changer, which is this big new feature of the Cavera that no hobbyist CNC comes with yet. In a nutshell it means that it can automatically change between tools. So no matter if you have to engrave something, drill something or mill something, the machine can pick up the required tool by itself. And honestly speaking, this feature is awesome. Because it saves me time and makes things just a lot easier to handle. The only problem for me at this point though 
was that my machine was apparently not capable of picking up the tools and instead just pushed them down. But the first good news here is that the Cavera comes with a special tool that you can use to readjust the position of those plastic holders, which are mandatory for the automatic tool changer to work. And the second good news is that my Cavera contact person prepared a guide for me on how to fix this problem. And as it turns out, one nut was simply not tight enough. So after going through quite a bit of trouble, my automatic tool changer finally worked. And thus, I firstly walked through all the example projects given by the examples guides to get a better feeling on how to use the CNC. Those examples included milling a PCB, ABS plastic, engraving acrylic glass, milling aluminium, laser engrave and MDF boards, because yes, this CNC also comes with a laser, create a 3-axis relief and finally also a 4-axis relief, which for me at least was the most impressive task. And like I said at the beginning, the quality of all those created parts was pretty awesome. And I love that you can combine the individual pieces to create a bigger project, which in this case was a touch activated nightlight. Awesome stuff. While going through the examples, I also got a good feeling on how to handle the software. And by that I mean, I understood how to create the offset to define where the machine starts and how to do the automatic leveling, which by the way is the second big plus point of this machine. Basically put, before every job, the machine picks up a wireless probe to measure how level your work material surface is. And this is especially important for PCB milling, but more about that later. Before that, let me point out the last two big pros of the CNC. And that is for one, the included vacuum function that gets rid of most of the excess material. And the other thing is that you can close up the CNC with its lids to not only keep all the materials and fumes inside, but it also drastically decreases the noise level. For me, this is probably the best feature, because I cannot work for long around loud noises. And if you want a more scientific sound level measuring test, then feel free to check out the Cavero video about the topic. Okay, so far it definitely seems like I only have positive things to say about the Cavera. But there is actually one huge negative point I saved for last, and that is the missing software. You see, a CNC simply follows G-code commands like these right here to move around, and to convert your 3D design or PCB design into such G-code, you obviously need a software that the Cavera team has simply not released yet. Now they did release profiles though for the CNC for certain popular applications. But when it comes to PCB design, they simply advised me to use CopperCam. And luckily, they also created a small video tutorial for me on how to use it. So I was not completely clueless when it came to setting up the tools and everything else. But I still needed a PCB design to test. And all I knew at this point was that I didn't want to do another through hole design like from the example projects because the Cavera is capable of doing that without breaking a sweat. So what I did instead was creating an SMD test board with the help of the Altium Designer software, in which I included some of the most popular SMD footprints. And needless to say, I used JLC PCB to get the professional PCBs for reference purposes, which means it was time to import the design files into CopperCam and do some fine tuning. And here is where problems started. Sometimes pads were not recognized as pads, drilling holes didn't line up correctly, and the removal path for the solder mask was oftentimes also not complete. But despite those issues, the carving of the copper traces was pretty much always possible. And since the engraver only enters the material 0.05mm, it should be easily comprehensible why the auto leveling is so important for good PCB milling. And in case you're wondering about the solder mask, it is easy to apply, dries under UV lights, and can then be removed from the copper pads we have to solder to. 
Such solder mask keeps the copper from oxidizing and it also makes soldering a lot easier because the solder does not stick to other copper roundeds. And as you can see, the Cavera is definitely capable of doing TQFP64 and 0201 component footprints, which have a distance of around 0.5mm between the pads. Very impressive. Next, I also tried out a new design I created for an upcoming project. And that turned out decent as well. Only the drilling holes were not correctly positioned. And last but not least, like I presented at the beginning of the video, I tried the soldering hot plate PCB, which I firstly showcased in a previous video. And as you can see, by letting current flow through it, it really does heat up like the original one, meaning the created milled PCBs are also functional. The only thing I was not capable of trying out was creating a double sided design which most of my PCB designs actually require. For that, Carvero gives you such small rivets to connect the front side to the back side. But since exact positioning with centering holes is mandatory for that and my software was going crazy at times, I was not able to do that. So all in all, I think the Carvero hardware is pretty great. Not only when it comes to traditional milling with wood and tons of other materials, but also when it comes to PCB milling. The only thing that is holding it back is the missing software that will hopefully soon release and make my PCB designs millable. And some people might also argue that the work area is too small and that the price point is simply too high. But of course that is all subjective. Besides those points, I have to say that so far for me, the Carvera is the best CNC I've worked with and I hope I can use it during future projects. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to hear what you think about this machine in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative! And I will see you next time.